All right. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us um, for this live webinar. We're really excited to meet and to talk to Teresa Case today. She is the owner and director of right. Piano Central Hello, Studio. So and um, she'll be giving a talk today about how she uses practice space with her studio. And one great thing is that Teresa has been a longtime practice space user, and she has a studio with you know, over 1,000 students a lot of teachers using it. So she has a ton of insight for all of you. Um, so I will turn it over to Teresa and she'll have a very nice um, slideshow to present with everybody as well. Well, Chris, thank you for that introduction and uh, welcome to all of you who have joined us. And um, let's see, I think we are about ready to hit the first slide. There we go. Um, so, you know, one of the challenges whenever you try something new as a studio owner is how do I get everybody on board? How do I get them as excited about this new thing as I am? And that's what we're going to talk today. And basically, I'm just going to share my journey. I'm going to share with you um, what worked for us. Um, I've got a lot of um, things to show you that I've created that we've used as part of getting everybody motivated and on board with practice space. And um, I hope too that you'll put some comments in. Um, I'll try to keep an eye out for those. Um, and um, we will have hopefully some time for questions um, at the end. So feel free to make note of any questions that you might have. But um, again, thank you for joining me today and we will go ahead and dive right in. So here's what we're gonna cover today. We're gonna talk about, first of all, let's get our teachers on board. Um, and to do that, we're gonna need to provide some training and resources for them. And then it's parents um, and what kind of education and support do our parents need? And then, of course, you can't forget about the students. Um, they're the ones that are really going to be, um, uh, for the most case, um, most part, using um, practice space. They're also going to be the ones that are going to be the most motivated and benefited by the rewards and the gamification that I just love is part of practice space. And then also just when it comes to your own studio, what kind of decisions, what kind of systems that do you need to have in place um, to really make this work? So uh, we'll start with the teachers. Um, now this is um, obviously geared towards someone who has teachers teaching for them, but I think that you'll find some things in here that might be helpful even if you're only teaching for, if you're teaching for yourself. So what's the problem? <laughs> um, Students who don't practice very well, who practice incorrectly, who don't practice at all. It's the age old bane of our existence, right, as teachers. And um, we really have found that practice space is a solution for us. And um, this is how you need to present that to your teachers. Um, we all know this is a problem, not practicing, not practicing well, not practicing enough. And so here's a great solution. And it's so perfectly geared for, for kids of this a generation, right? They almost come pre-wired to know how to work the electronics and, and to be very drawn to that. So why not take advantage of that? So I think when it comes to your teachers, it's really important to provide some education, just helping them understand, all right, what are some of the features? What are some of the benefits of practice space? And just to sort of start with that foundation with them. And so, of course, if you've explored practice space, if you've used practice space at all yourself, you know that some of those really wonderful features include the digital assignment book. No more paper. <laughs> no more having hand write stuff out. Um, the digital assignment book is just huge, in my opinion. That's one of the reasons that we switch to something online. Um, the fact that there's a media and assignment library, um, the fact that there are customizable student awards, there's an in-app metronome, a built-in practice timer, a practice video feed. These are just some of the many really amazing features of practice space and things that you want to present to your teachers as, as positives. So, um, 
but features are one thing, <laughs> benefits are another. And I think this is also just as important as helping them understand what is part of practice space to really understand what some of the benefits are going to be. And I, I already mentioned this one. It just makes creating assignments so much easier. You can type instead of handwrite. You can copy assignments. You can pull from the library. Um, it just it actually becomes more efficient. And you know, let's acknowledge the elephant in the room, right? That there's a learning curve with anything new. And, you know, after a while you sort of figure out what your your process or your system is as a teacher. And I would encourage your teachers that way, that look, there is a little bit of a learning curve with anything new, um, but you'll figure it out and you'll figure out how to make it work. Um, but I think another huge benefit is that, um, it really using practice space really enhances the weekly assignment. So you can easily upload a theory sheet or a little video that explains a certain tricky passage in the piece or, um, you know, just something else that otherwise would have been difficult maybe to deliver to a student um, in a non digital way. <coughs> And so you can really enhance the weekly assignments with using a digital platform like Practice Space. And, and again, these are things you're telling your teachers. Um, what we have found is that in really working to refine the way that we create the assignments in Practice Space, we're able to get a lot more clarity on how and what to practice at home. And so that is a little bit of an art in itself, how you create those assignments in such a way that there's it's it's just it's it's no brainer. Um, pe students, parents understand immediately what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to work through the practice, and it just helps so much. And because of all those things above, you know, enhanced assignments, giving better clarity, more step by step approach, the effectiveness of their practice is improved. And again. We know as teachers that we can just get students practicing, they'll make progress and with progress comes success and with success comes that dopamine hit and then they want to do it all over again. So anything that we can do to improve the effectiveness of their practice is just going to be so helpful in keeping those students moving forward and prog progressing and motivated. But another thing we really love is that um, having a digital platform like Practice Space means that there's um, no more hassle, no more cost with those printed assignment notebooks that we always had before. And if the student forgets it, if you're doing an online lesson, whatever, you always have access to that assignment notebook essentially right because it's digital and so the access is available to you and to the student um i remember um in my early years when i was still doing some teaching um i would often think oh I, I wish I could have given them this, or I wish I could have sent that, or maybe I wanted to work a little head on some lesson planning. With Pride of Space, teachers can do that, of course. Um, and then this is something that's been really big for us and probably the topic for another training if Pride of Space uh, wants to have me back. But um, we we don't have, um, or let me say it this way, we don't do makeup lessons. And instead, um, if a student has to miss a lesson, they have the option of either scheduling an online Zoom lesson at their regular lesson time. And again, practice space comes in perfect for that. Um, but if they can't do the online Zoom lesson at their regular time, then our teachers create a missed lesson assignment. Um, they use their lesson time to create this assignment when a student is absent or can't attend. And so with the tool like Practice Space, that is so easy. Um, and then another really great thing about Practice Space is that there's this clear record of progress. Parents can see it, Kids, students can see it, teachers can see it, and um, it's it's really easy just to see how far students have come. Um, one of the things that a lot of our teachers love to do is just regularly record the students. So how do they sound in September when they first start? Oh, wow, how are they sounding in November? How are they sounding in, in January? And then by the end of the year, you can really have a 
wonderful moment of celebration with the students as well as the parents, just kind of reliving, revisiting some of those videos and realizing, wow, this student really has made so much progress um, that might not have been obvious in any other way. So we love the whole progress part. And then another part is just training, all right? We've got to acknowledge this is something new. There is a learning curve. Um, people are naturally resistant to change. Um, and some of that's just because they want to do a great job and they don't understand yet how this works. And so that's where, um, for my teachers, we just came in with a lot of training and um, really detailed training, actually. So it was more about the experience that we wanted to give our students and families through practice space. And so we did a lot of work together on how to create effective assignments, organizing and building a media and assignment library. That was, I mean, when teachers sort of caught on to that, it was life changing for them. Um, but you know, sometimes you just have to lead the, that that for them and explain that and lead the way um, and even okay how do you review student videos and and you know some of this you might decide there's some policy around this that you want to create for your um, music school um, how to answer questions from parents what are those frequently asked questions and and what's the answer to them and you have to train your teachers on them because they're on the front line, right, with those students and parents. And so if they have the answers, then it makes everything easier, makes the adoption higher, um, makes parents and students less resistant. And then um, I also think it's important to train your teachers how to introduce practice space to the students. Um, because if the students are excited about using it, the app, if they're, um, I understand how to use it, you're going to, again, have a lot more adoption and long-term use with practice space. So teach teachers how to teach their students how to use practice space. And then um, uh, I think it's important, too, for teachers to understand your prize system. You know, what do students earn gems for? A lot of you have recently switched over from another platform and um, you're figuring this out. Well, you, your teachers need to figure this out too because how wonderful is it for a teacher to be able to say, hey, wow, you just got that practice streak and you earned, you know, 50 extra gems for that. That's amazing. Or let's adjust your practice goal a little bit and let's see if you can consistently get this higher practice reach this higher practice goal because you're going to get that many more gems. So, and then, you know, teasing out some of those prizes, right? We're going to talk about that a little later, but just helping your teachers understand price, your price system is another important part of this training. I would say looking at all of these, um, the thing that we have spent the most time on and continue to spend the most time is on is how to create those effective assignments which kind of includes using the library um, and you know helping students understand better how to how to use practice space so that um, effective assignment training is is something that we just still keep trying to look at from different angles and different facets all the time so um I am hoping that maybe uh, if you're able to comment or chat, you're welcome to. I hope you're hanging on. OK, um, there's so much to share. And clearly, I'm an avid practice space fan. Um, and, you know, the irony of it is um, I don't teach lessons anymore. I still teach a few kinder music classes a week, but um, I am such a huge fan and I just really love what it has done for our school, for our students, um, for our teachers. And so um, I hope you're catching some of that enthusiasm, even if we're talking about some things that, you know, are more logistical. So then, you know, you've, you've really helped educate your teachers, you've inspired them, you've, you know, you're giving them this training, but then there needs to be some ongoing support. And this is where we found that creating a few resources or giving a few ongoing sort of training workshop kind of opportunities for our teachers has been super helpful. 
Um, and, you know, they come up with great ideas, too. So there's a lot of benefit from putting them in the room together. So we have done some group work sessions, like especially at the beginning of the school year um, when a lot of new things are happening. We're setting practice space up um, for the new year and trying to add some new things and and um, add some things that are more creative and exciting for the students. So we've done some work sessions. Um, we've actually done those over Zoom and it has worked really, really well that way. And um, the collaboration and the brainstorming that happens has just been inspiring. And then um, I did create a practice space resource guide. So I just collated a lot of things from the practice space website and blogs and just screenshots and things that we were kind of learning. And I put them into this resource guide for teachers. And then that means that, um, of course, um, my director and I are here to answer questions, but I um, They've also got something that they can go to when we're not immediately available. Um, and then another way that you can support your teachers and create some resources is to look at, OK, are there some resources that we can share with teachers for bulk upload? And yay for all these amazing enhancements that Practice Space has been coming out with recently. This is one of them. Um, and we really love this because um, part of our awards program outside of the awards and rewards in practice space um, is a listening category and students um, listen to music that and links from links that we provide and so we've you know provided all that to teachers but they were having to upload that individually one by one and so now we have this bulk load bulk bulk upload option and our minds are spinning okay what else can we provide to our teachers what else can we help our teachers share with each other that they could do bulk, bulk uploading with so this is this is something that you know kind of as as the owner of your program as a leader in your studio you can be thinking about ways to not only help support your teachers but ultimately even enhance the student experience as well um, and then i we did this for a while when we were first using um, practice this space, we just had some share sessions where teachers could brainstorm and share ideas together. Um, we did these once a month. They were not very long, about 15 minutes, um, but it was just a regularly scheduled thing over Zoom and teachers could join in and um, they could, you know, share ideas, ask questions, um, talk about, you know, anything that was feeling hard or any successes they had. And that was a huge part of really getting our teachers um, not just on board, but excited um, and really looking forward to how this tool was going to revolutionize in many ways their teaching and their students practice. So I hope that section about getting the teachers on board was helpful. Well, now the next stage is getting the parents on board, getting them um, ready, um, getting them excited about using the app, maybe overcoming some of their, you know, instinctive objections. So here's where education and support really come in. What are the problems? All right, we talked about the main problem for teachers is just students not practicing, not practicing enough. Well, for parents, um, that they, you know, they have these struggles too, and um, they often have the challenge of getting their child to even want to practice, right? Um, maybe not even knowing what or how their student is supposed to be practicing. Um, not understanding about the progress their child is making in lessons or how to keep their student motivated to continue to take lessons. And I really believe that practice space, check, 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 all of those problems. It's the answer. It's the solution. And this is, I think, you know, when we're talking about getting other people on board, getting other people excited, getting other people to see the potential that we see for a tool like practice space. A lot of this is, first of all, confidence, right? Leading with confidence. This is the way to do it. This is a fantastic tool. It is going to make such a big difference. But it's also acknowledging what are those pain points and how does this, this tool solve those pain points? And so when you're talking about these kinds of things, these things resonate with parents. These are real challenges that that music lesson parents face. 
and practice space can be the solution in so many ways um, to all of those challenges. So the first thing with parents is, again, similar to what we were doing with teachers, except this is more um, a, a softer launch, I would say, um, where we want to introduce that we want to highlight some of the key features. And of course, some great features are that they can access practice space from a device or a computer. Um, uh, there's that built in practice timer. There's practice goals. You know, parents often think or ask, how long should my child be practicing? Well, you can set that practice goal and practice space and then they know. And, and practice space is easy for students to use to start their own timer and to know that they've reached their own practice goal. And again, this was huge for us, a digital assignment book, um, no paper book to use. We used to every year print probably, um, well, well over a thousand um, assignment notebooks every year, spiral bound, um, and it was expensive. Uh, so <laughs> um, practice space has saved us so much money just on printing costs, um, not to mention just that hassle of the assignments that go missing or pages that get torn out or lost. So, and, and parents get that too, right? Because how many times did we hear a parent say, I am late to my lesson because we were couldn't find our music, you know, assignment book. <laughs> um, so no more looking for that. And then that in an app metronome, one less thing for parents to buy, those step-by-step -step assignments, the gems, the weekly leaderboard, the practice streaks, the certificates, the prizes. And guess what, parents? You get all of this for free with your enrollment at our studio. And we tell parents all the time, this is an enrollment benefit of being enrolled here at Piano Central Studios. You get this free access. Um, and then, you know, one thing you might want to do, just a little tip here as you're thinking about how to introduce practice space to parents, create a little video, just create a little video, short, 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 um, demonstrating how easy it is to set up and start using practice space on a device or computer. You can sometimes tell people all day long until you're blue in the face. Um, but if you show them, you got them. Right. So that little video might just be huge and you could use that and put that in so many different places. And then after you introduce it to parents, you've got to do a lot of a reminding. <laughs> you've got to find ways to keep practice space top of mind for them. So some things that we did is we created some posters to hang in your studio with a QR code and your school code access. Um, and you can give out flyers. Um, I'm a big Canva fan too. And so, you know, I love that whole resize feature where you can create it in one format and then resize it and it's pretty much done in a smaller format. So we created little half sheet flyers that were the same design as our posters that we hung in the waiting room. And we gave those flyers out to every student. So old school, I know, printed flyers, but that was hugely helpful. And then we did so much email communication. And even now, a part of our onboarding is this text that goes to parents that says, hey, don't forget to download practice space. And here's our you know, school code. And um, just we're just trying to keep this top of mind. We'll make sure everybody in the whole school is using practice space. And then early on, we had to do a little bit more individual hand-holding, individual persuading. Um, and I would just say, you know, as you're introducing this to parents, as you're finding, thinking about different ways to remind them, be willing to go parent by parent if you have to. And by the way, this should be something that your teachers might be willing to help with, that maybe they would, you know, talk to parents Again, there you can see how important it is for parent or for your teachers um, to have a good, solid understanding and be just as bought into practice space as you are, because they can really help with um, uh, adoption with parents. And then, then this is so fun. We love doing this, and our teachers um, they send us pictures, and I'll be showing some of those to you in just a little bit. But um, share practice space success stories in your weekly emails and on your social media. Um, the, there's no better way to have sort of the double benefit of um, highlighting a student's 
you know, success, recognizing them for an achievement. And as a side, getting to promote practice space too, with maybe those who aren't using it um, as well, or maybe not yet using it um, yourself or themselves. So that little sharing of those success stories can be huge. And then just like with teachers, um, we also created a practice um, space guide for parents. Um, and I have a couple of things that I wanted to show you here. Um, this is a sample of the poster that we hung in the lobby. We actually um, created our own app at the same the same year that we uh, adopted Practice Space. And so we just had this poster hanging in the lobby um, and uh, really encouraging, you know, just trying to keep it handy keeping it in front of parents. And then this was a little flyer that we sent home to pair, uh, students. Um, we did send home something that looked like the poster, but then we also found that this was helpful too, to send home um, about, um, you know, okay, how, do, how do, what are the steps? You know, and then what are we gonna, what are they gonna love about it? And so um, this, this was really helpful, I think, to getting our adoption rates up. And then um, I did have this set up to be able to show you as a, a uh, like a little flip book. And I'm sorry that it didn't transfer into StreamYard, but um, basically it's just this pretty simple, clean design looking kind of guide, answering their questions, you know, linking to where do they get practice space, explaining about how to use it on a device versus how to use it um, on, on the website. So we just have this guide available. It's digital, it's not printed, um, but we, um, again, this is something we give out to parents as part of their onboarding. It's also um, one of the guides that we link to uh, regularly in our weekly emails. And so again, just trying to keep practice space top of mind um, to encourage parents not only to adopt practice space, but to keep using practice space because that's really important too. All right, how you doing? We talked about how to get your teachers excited and motivated and on board. We talked about how to get teach, uh, parents excited and motivated and on board. And this really is the easy part. Um, this is the student. They are naturally gonna gravitate towards this kind of a tool. Um, and once they see uh, how it can really work for them and the rewards they can get and sort of that gamification element, um, they're gonna be hooked. Um, I wish, like anything, that I had had something like this as a child taking piano lessons. I did not like to practice, and I'm so glad my mom made me, um, but I didn't like to practice. However, I was very much re uh, motivated by rewards and prizes, and um, if I could have been practicing with an app like Practice Space, oh my goodness, I would have practiced so much because I would have wanted those prizes. I would have wanted to be at the top of the leaderboard. You know, all of those kind of things motivated me. Um, so, you know, here, here's here's how you get your students on board. Um, we I kind, kind of like to think of it as show and tell, right? This is the way you get your students engaged. So. First thing is you you want to demo it. Make sure that you as a teacher, make sure your teachers are showing practice space to your student, teaching them how to use it. We really encouraged our teachers to um, set up a um, sort of a dummy student account so that they could see what it was like from the student's perspective or from the family's perspective. But then this it was also vital for them to do that in order to be able to show the the students what it looks like from the teacher or from the student side. So just demoing it, you know, showing students how easy it is teaching them. This is how you start the timer. This is how you stop the timer. You know, this is where you can send videos. This is just walking them through kind of this little tour of practice space. And it doesn't have to take long. Um, and then, and actually it doesn't take long for the kids to get the students to get really excited about practice space. And then this is an idea. Um, I wish we had done this. Um, this kind of came to me as I was working on this presentation, but um, to just, Display it. 
And what I mean by that is that maybe you can create a little flyer or a poster or something that you could hang up with pictures of some of the prizes that you could, and you hang that in your studio. So it's kind of like, ah, this is what I could learn or earn as I learn, <laughs> earn. Um, and just to kind of motivate students with a little idea of what kind of prizes are in there. Of course, you can show them the store in the app, but I think sometimes just that visual element is really motivating in and of itself. And, um, and then highlight it. You know, when students get a prize, make a big deal about it. We're going to talk about this in just a second, um, too, about some of the prizes we do and some of the things that we, how we try to make a big deal. But, um, you know, make a big deal in front of their parents. You know, make a big deal with their peers. You know, maybe you put something on the door or maybe you... Um, uh, you just acknowledge them some other way, recognize them some other way, make a big deal about that. And then also another little fun thing is when you add new prizes to the store, announce that, um, you know, and the team at Pride Space adds new avatars, you know, highlight those, you know, you could do something in your weekly email or on some social media, and um, you can really get so much mileage out of out of doing that, you're kind of doing it for the students to motivate them, but you're getting the mileage, you know, from doing all that social media and parent communication as well. And then um, we, uh, this last one I'm calling recognize it, but um, we do a little extra with rewarding practice streaks. Um, we create custom certificates and you can see in this picture here, this little girl is holding her trophy for getting um, a half year. I think she got a half year um, uh, practice streak and, and we, we give them a gift card too. So like, yes, there's a little bit of investment, but oh my goodness. Can you, the progress a student makes when they've practiced, you know, 180 days in a row or 365, we've had several kids get 365 days. It's amazing. Um, and to me, it's worth that investment, not just in the student, but even practically from a business standpoint, that investment in retention, student retention. Um, I've got kids who are motivated by 180 or 365 day practice streak. You can believe they're not going to want to quit lessons. They're not going to want to stop taking lessons in the summer. So, you know, a few dollars on a trophy or a few dollars on a gift card to me is a worthwhile investment with huge return. So um, here are some of the prizes. This is just a very small sampling of, of what we've done. Um, I've tried to find that balance between, you know, those like little toys and gadgets that kids just love and candy or other things that um, maybe even might be more appealing to the older students. So you can see things. This was a set, they call this Woodland Erasers. Um, I think I, they got them from Fun Express. And I would, I've been shocked. How many kids, uh, boys and girls, who just, they love these woodland erasers. Um, the practice space, I'm sorry, not the practice space, those candy necklaces. Um, again, one of those things that I remember from my childhood, um, my mother didn't often let me have um, because she didn't want me to have that much sugar. But um, uh, clearly that didn't stop me from putting it in our our price um, store. But, um, you know, candy necklaces, I even found candy bracelets. And then these are, you know, angry bird pop ups, I, you know, just this the little things, but you would, I just am constantly surprised at what the kids really, really go for. Um, some of the lasting favorites are Sour Patch Candies or those Push Pops or the Ring Pops. Those are super popular. Um, and what I've done is I've just, I'll generally buy a small amount, like 12 at a time or 24 at a time, and I'll see how they go. And then, you know, if it's really popular, we mark that down and, you know, we generally keep those things stocked. Not so popular, we're rotated out and, and bring in something else new. But I'm, I'm often surprised by what the kids, the students go for. So um, 
and this has been fun, but we get him, we get our prices from um, funexpress.com. Um, that is a, um, an affiliate of Oriental Trading, but it's geared for businesses. Um, there might be a form you have to fill out. You don't have to have a resale license or anything like that, but um, they, and then there, I think there's minimum purchases, but if you kind of do your big purchase for the year in the fall, I think it's, just, you know, maybe a hundred or $200. Um, and it, you know, if you've got a larger school, hope you can easily spend that pretty quickly. So, um, um, but you get some good deals and you can get some bulk. Of course, Amazon um, or even your local dollar store can be great places um, to find prizes. Um, and just a little side note, this is a freebie. Uh, uh, I have always, I've had a long time Amazon Prime account. Um, I'm a little bit addicted to getting things like, you know, the next day or in two days. Um, and then I discovered that you can have an Amazon business prime account that's linked. Um, and so you're not paying like an extra separate prime fee. Um, it's like just a little bit more or something, but it's been so nice um, because um, it keeps business and personal purchases separate. And um, also with Amazon uh, business, um, there's often uh, um, special pricing for bulk purchasing. So that's kind of when I mention it here. Um, I'm not an Amazon affiliate. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not a paid endorser or anything like that, but um, I've just really loved it even for the bulk purchasing with some of these things that we're putting in our practice space store so here's uh, i don't know what happened to this picture oh goodness um but anyway this little girl is holding her prize you can't see it huh? but um here's one of our guys who like saved 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 all his gems and then i think he redeemed them all at one time you can literally see he's probably got i don't know like eight prizes six or eight prizes um and we do not give our prizes away they cost gems i um, let me tell you so that was a big deal and we just love that picture because you can just see how excited and happy he is um and then this uh student um this is a I think a one year, maybe. Um, we used to do balloons and then we decided to do trophies because it was easier, quite frankly. Um, but we actually we actually make sure to um, make a big deal out of delivering um, when they get a practice streak for 180 or 365 days. And um, I mean, you can just see, I think um, Owen is, in junior high, I had him in kinder music when he was a baby, but um, he's in junior high. And how amazing, you know, that here is a student who's probably got a lot of other things he could be doing and he is practicing so faithfully. And I love that we get to reward that. This picture that kind of, not sure what happened, but um, it's just a picture of, you know, a probably a fifth or sixth grade girl holding a prize that she got. But the kids love getting these prizes um and you know when you put yourself in their shoes and what's what they're going to like and what they're going to motivate you'll probably, probably find some pretty great things for your practice space store, store too so all of this is great but now how do you actually make it work and this is where there's a few studio decisions a few systems um, that i want to just kind of highlight for you as you're thinking about you know, maybe launching this um, or or maybe um, improving what you're already doing with practice space. And so this is kind of, you know, behind the curtain, what are some things that you need to think about? What are maybe some systems that you want to put in place? Um, I love systems. I'm huge on <laughs> creating processes and documenting everything we do. And um, it's been no different with practice space. And actually with a school as large as ours, it was necessary for us to come up with a system um, for awarding prizes and delivering prizes and all of that. So um, here are a few things that you will want to think about. You know, first of all, I think one of the big questions is how are you going to phase practice space in? And actually, maybe it's not a phase. Maybe it's a dive in and swim um, and just go all in. That's what we did. We went all digital at one time. 
And so um, we recognized and accepted the fact that we weren't going to get 100% adoption right from the beginning. And so um, the digital choices that we gave were students either use practice space or they received a digital assignment in a shared Google Drive folder. So I created a you know, a, a lesson plan template that we, you know, teachers could copy in Google and then just share it into the students folder. Um, and we did more of that at the beginning. It's less of that now um, because we have so many of our students using practice space. But um, I felt like it was important for adoption. In fact, I know without a doubt it was important for adoption for us just to say no more assignment notebooks. I mean, I even had a few teachers say, are you sure? Can, can I just like buy one of those cheap spiral bound notebooks at, you know, the dollar store? And, you, and I said, absolutely not. And I'm I'm not normally a really adamant, you know, hardliner or anything like that. But I knew that if if we didn't say this is what we're doing, um, that we would never, ever fully make that leap into where I wanted to be, and that was digital. And so, um, you know, the digital assignment in a Google Drive folder was kind of our concession. Um, but what it did for our teachers too is that it got them used to, okay, how do I, you know, how do, how do I need to create digital assignments? So instead of them even having to have their feet in two different worlds, the paper world and the digital world, it was all digital. It was just either a Google Drive assignment sheet or practice space. Um, and then, you know, the phasing in, um, this goes back to that teacher training and support I mentioned at the beginning. We did so much of that the first year, especially, um, but it's still an ongoing focus for us. Um, I am driven to always improve and do better. And how can we make it easier? How can we make it simpler? How can we, you know, just make our student experience, our family experience, our teacher experience even so stellar um, that we keep those students, we keep those families, we keep those teachers. And so th this, whole, I mean, practice space is central. It's one of the elements of what we call the PCS experience. And so we continue to really focus on it and train on it, um, even though our teachers are really, really loving it. So another decision you'll probably have to make is what will your store and your prizes look like? Um, and you probably caught this from something I said earlier, but we've chosen to invest in a slightly more robust store um, to keep student motivation and really ultimately student retention at the highest level possible. Um, and um, I you know, budget wise, I consider that part of our registration or enrollment fee that we charge every year um, goes towards, you know, it's kind of earmarked towards some of these um, costs for um, uh, fulfilling our practice based store. Um, and but I think it's worth it. And um, when I see how excited and happy those students are um, and how motivated they are to win those practice streaks and earn those gems and get those prizes, I, I know it's it's really worth it. Um, <laughs> I should tell on myself. So, you, you know, there, it's kind of a two step process with adding the prizes and, and putting them in the store and all of that. And um, I actually made the mistake <laughs> of assigning a pretty nice candy prize, a very low gem price. And I was you know, so we started getting all these requests for this particular candy. And I thought, oh, wow, I, I figured it out what every student wants. And um, I mean, we had some kids who were getting like 10 boxes. <laughs> and so my wonderful uh, customer care um, specialist um, finally figured out that I had incorrectly set the gem price, so I had to eat some humble pie or maybe some humble candy and uh, go talk to some parents about, okay, um, we messed up and we'll still give your students candy, but I'm pretty sure you don't actually want them to have 11 theater size boxes of sprees or Skittles. So, um, <laughs> and the parents were like super understanding about it, but anyway, funny story. Um, and then as far as, you know, thinking a little further about studio decisions and systems, um, document what you do. Um, you do want to create a simple and scalable system 
no matter what size uh, studio or music school you have, you want a system that's going to make using practice space and um, continuing to give out great prizes and um, motivating students easy. And so we actually use a spreadsheet um, and that's just because it was easy to kind of put some formulas in and keep track of inventory a little better. And um, even on that same spreadsheet, uh, I have linked like to where we get the prizes. And so then when we need to reorder a certain one, um, it's so, so easy. I just, you know, click and I'm I'm right there at, this, at the source. Um, and then also a, a system I mentioned kind of briefly in passing was we do have a schedule for fulfilling and delivering prizes. So we're kind of on a routine of that. It's usually about once a week um, that we fulfill those prizes and then um, we take them to teachers who deliver them to students. Um, and then when it's, you know, like a big practice streak, like 180 days or 365, um, we actually uh, arrange with the teacher to show up and it's kind of a big, exciting event. Um, but all of that is just this is how we do it. You know, it's decided, it's documented, and it's the process we follow. And I really, really encourage you to do that um, about practice space, but really about anything else in your business too, because it's going to make running your business a lot easier. So here's a little bit about prize documentation. So this is these are just some little screenshots from that um, uh, the Excel sheet that I was telling the spreadsheet I was telling you about. So I decided um, what okay if if the item cost me up to forty nine cents it would cost the student one hundred seventy five gems. Um, if it cost me between fifty and fifty nine. Um, cents it the cost for the student to purchase that item 225 gems and so this is kind of based on um, you know what I figured I think Robert had told me when we first started that generally students can earn around 25 gems a week on average obviously beginning of you know using practice space or certain times they'll get a little a spike in that but on average about 25 gems a week and so then I thought about Okay, if I want them to maybe be able to earn a prize, you know, every six weeks, every six to eight weeks, you know, how does, you know, how does that affect how I price their prizes in, in terms of gems? Does that, I'm hoping that makes sense. But whatever it is for you, it's super helpful then when you go to buy something and you go, and then this is where you can see some of the math is coming in. Um, you know, there were, um, how much do these cost each? You know, how many you know, do we have on hand, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and and then this just helps us determine the cost for the gems. So um, and you can scan. I, I hope you can. I don't know how well you can see the screen, but, um, you know, uh, there's we have all the fun prizes all listed here, like a neon bendable monkey or uh strawberry mentos or snake cube twist puzzle um lots of fun things we have fun things with that and then we also um give extra awards for practice based prizes so when they get 100 days practice streak they get of course the gems that practice space automatically awards we do a certificate we give them a uh, brag tag and i'll tell you about those see this this is going to freebies here. This is another little freebie I can't wait to tell you about, but they get the practice, um, the brag tag, and then they get a Brewster's ice cream gift card. And um, at 100 days, all those things, um, plus a trophy and a Chick-fil-A gift card. When it's a year, they get a large trophy um, and a Krispy Kreme gift card, plus the gems and certificate. And um, actually, brag tag should be on there too. So, um, we one of the things that we do at our music school is um we give out a branded um, music bag a, a canvas music bag and um i actually <laughs> source those directly from a manufacturer um in china um so because i'm buying such a large number i get a great deal on those but um these brag tags here you can see they have a little hole in the top so this is front and this is the back they have a little hole and then there's this little ball and chain kind of thing. So the students put the little ball and chain around the handle of their music bag, and then they start hanging all the brag tags that they collect. So um, we give brag tags for a lot of different things, mainly participation, 
Um, but in this case, it's a Brock tag for a, a practice streak. Um, so that's kind of fun for them. And then um, school life dot com is where I get the uh, brag text from. They will customize them and they do an amazing job. I don't know who their designer is, but they do an amazing job with designing custom brag text for us. And I love it. Um, so schoollife.com. And then um, we get our trophies. Um, and you might have noticed from that picture I showed you earlier, there was like a custom little, um, they call it a Mylar label in the middle of that trophy. And so I designed it in Canva. I sent them the design and they made the sticker out of it and put it on the trophy and it looks so awesome. Um, Jones Awards is who we use for all of our trophies, not just for practice space, but also for our um, spring recital awards program. So I hope it gives you, excuse me, <coughs> um, a good a little sneak peek and just to kind of the back end of things, like how it works and, you know, how we keep ourselves organized and um, keep some great prizes in our store as well. Um, here's a sample of a certificate I created in Canva. Um, and then we just, you know, change out the students' names. We print these on our color printer on some nice cardstock. Um, so it's a pretty inexpensive thing, but this it's such a big deal to the students. Um, and and um, we love getting this out and they love getting it. So um, I don't know if any questions have come on, uh, come through, Chris, while I've been talking and talking and talking. <laughs> but maybe if you have some questions you wanted to ask or um, share from the audience, I'm glad to take some time to answer. Oh, Chris, I think you might still be muted. Actually, looks like as I wasn't hearing you. Sorry about that. Oh, no worries. Yay. Yeah, that was, Sound. <laughs> that was a great presentation. I think it's incredible Thank you. for not just owners of studios, but teachers using practice space as well. There's so many things that everyone will take away from this. And um, there are a couple of questions. The first one is, um, is your family guide available um, for use? Like, is, is it, can others access that family <laughs> guide or is it something that um, it's, it's something that we just share internally, but I'd be glad to get it to you all to share as an example out to the uh, practice space uh, teacher community. Sure. Yeah. And I think another one that'd be really useful because we've been getting this question a lot in the Facebook um, group and there's been a lot of conversation around it. It's just how do you calculate how many gems <laughs> to get people for the prizes? And that's something that I think everyone would love to see that spreadsheet. If you can share that with us, and if you don't mind, if we can share it in our group sometime or something. Yeah, like that, because yeah sure. Because that you did all the work to figure out. And figure <laughs> out <laughs> well, it's actually, it was actually based on some stats that Robert pulled. And 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 um, I think there was a post that I answered um, a couple of weeks ago about that whole gem app. How do you figure all that out? And um, Robert said that he would run a little update to see if maybe that average, like the 25 gems a week average was still kind of, you know, consistent. So um, yeah, I'll get with Robert, make sure that that, that spreadsheet is updated. So happy to share that. Um, I think that's all the questions for now. Um, but one, a couple of points that I think there's a huge takeaway from um, were the makeup lessons. And I think we definitely should do another uh, webinar eventually on makeup lessons because that is something that we all struggle with. And for a quick question for you, because um, we're almost out of time, how did you communicate this with the parents? And was this something that you did? Um, were you doing makeup lessons before? And how did you make that switch? Over. Sure. So we did have a policy of one makeup lesson in the fall and one makeup lesson in the spring. And that doesn't sound like very much to a parent, except that when you're a teacher with 30 or 40 students, which a lot of our teachers have, that's a whole nother week of lessons in the fall and a whole nother week of lessons in the spring. And it was just becoming unsustainable. And so when we switch to practice space. Practice space is really the key for us to being able to switch to that different makeup lesson policy. And so and so now it's it's we just started communicating. Um, I think we had a a couple of emails right before the beginning of the fall to just say, hey, here's what's new and exciting. Um, practice space and then miss lesson assignments. And we had a couple other little like I kind of wrapped it 
you know, you, you know, you sandwich it, right? You know, you put the great bread on top and the great bread on the bottom and, you know, the little thing you're sliding in the middle. Um, so, and then it was just, it's been a lot of still ongoing communication about that and, you know, helping teachers, you know, we've all got to be unified in this policy. Um, but it's actually been great because instead of it being kind of a week where the students don't do anything, having a missed lesson assignment. And again, because of all the, the capability and the enhancements that practice space allows for, we can deliver some killer miss lesson assignments and it keeps the students making progress. So instead of a week with no progress, if they'll do the assignment, they'll make that forward progress for that week. Definitely. And now with our new feeds, the students can also check in during the week as well. And um, our students have been loving that. And we've been a lot of reports back from teachers who think that's just so great. But uh, yeah. yeah, Teresa, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for everyone. My pleasure to watch um and we'll definitely have to do this again and i would be delighted so thank you teresa have a great day thanks chris bye everybody bye everybody